Hey everyone, after too many months, <laughs> we are back with FC Retake and we're going to talk about Dil Se. I'm glad we are back and I feel like we start every segment saying the same thing. It's okay, been six but a promise that we'll no, make this it No, this time a promise. Now we are on camera, we are saying it, so you hold us accountable. Yes, <laughs> yes. we will be back sooner. Yeah. Did you watch the film in... It's 25 years, first of all. Yeah, that's a great... Uh, 25 years, folks, of Dil Se. About. It's yeah. a great excuse to do this, but... Mm. but did you, in the, in the 24 years in between, ever go back to it? So, I mean, one of the rare films I didn't have the courage to go back to. Um, so, I had four films in the 90s. Because I was growing up in the 90s, I was yet not even a teenager when I saw it. Um, and I had four films that haunted me so much that I instantly grew up while watching it a little emotionally at least. And I kept wondering why my parents took me to watch these movies when we were watching DDLJ and Hum Aap Kya Kaun and all in between. First was 1942 A Love Story, uh, second was Bombay, third was Roja and fourth was Dil Se. So and the terrorism, Mani Ratnam film. The terrorism trilogy did it for you. Yeah, and it, of course like I don't know if you're supposed to take kids or not because I didn't see any other during the screenings. Um, How old were you? I was, when I watched Dilsa, I was 12. And wow. um, and we went to the drive-in, Ahmedabad had a drive-in. So, watched it. I remember very distinctly that I was quite disturbed by all three films and equally. And so much so that the scenes of all three films uh, now sort of combine into one, uh, into one film for me. And I can't tell the difference between the same. And of course, the collaborators were the same. And also, I never, because I watched it when I was 12 and I was only capable of understanding it so much. And for me, it was just good or bad, like a child would think. And I was like, terrorism, bad, this, that, there's no grace. So um, I never, never revisited, never. Because uh, of course the songs are classic, the soundtracks of all three. But Bombay Roja and Dil Se, if not for, if we weren't doing this, I may not have done it for a while. Me so. neither. And and here's the thing, Rahul. So I was already a working journalist, mm. right? Um, and I remember so clearly in my head the screening, the first screening of Dil Se. Okay, and this is a film produced by. Mani Ratnam, Shekhar Kapoor, Saw the names, yeah. Ram Gopal Varma, right? The holy trinity yeah, yeah. of that time. I mean, I, I, I don't know if their films came before or after, but in 98, all of them, yeah. uh, the other two as well. I mean, Satya was 98 and so was Shekhar's Elizabeth. Right, right. So, yeah. sort of the game-changing movies for these two, the three of them were just gods. And we went in thinking that Roja and Bombay, ke baad to, this is going to be the just the most stunning piece of cinema mm. ever and I remember so clearly that I think Satrangi Re started not Dil Se, not the title song mm. but Satrangi Re which is also so abstract yes. in its imagery yeah. and people thought the reels had been switched ah, wow. yeah. because us waqt reels tha, yeah. right there was always a possibility ki koi reel mix up ho gaya. Mm -hmm. and yeah. we were like ye kya hua? Ye gana kahan se gaya? Mm. Wow, wow, what's what's going on? Like we didn't get it at all, and there was such deep disappointment because the expectation was so high. Exactly. Yeah. And like you, I never went back to see it, and mm. now I saw it for this conversation, and I'm amazed at what a brave filmmaker he was. I mean, and is yeah, it's a cliche, but ahead of its time can be used in this context, especially totally. because we saw Anik last year and we saw films that have been trying to deal with the same thing, but not as successfully or not as vividly as they'll say. And I was wondering when I was watching it again, I'm like, I wonder how it must have been for critics to watch it back then because it we did seem it. like very abrupt and abstract. Like even now when I watch it, it felt like two parallel films going on. And it doesn't I, wholly work. Yeah, wh whether it's intentional or not is whatever. We can, you know, intellectualize it later. But of course, it's abrupt. The transitions are very weird. The songs are so long. Even though they're beautiful, they're so long. Uh, and I was like, sure, if I was a grown up and I'd watched it, then I would have been disappointed. I have a feeling, especially after the first two films and all. But uh, I do remember just the film becoming more of a sound and a feeling for me over time. Like, it's like Bombay and Roja. Like, I, there are things that you remember, there are sounds that you remember because of Rehman's music, because of the way even Mani Ratnam designs his films orally, like the sounds of the films. Uh, you just remember certain things that um, become its own entity in your head. So I guess Dilsay was one of those things. So I'm glad we, you know, finally had a chance to 
do this so but when you see it again when i see it now i look at just the courage okay of yeah. of yeah. a uh, going to the northeast i don't know in the 90s of any movie yeah. that was even addressing that part of our country uh, and then you're talking about 50 years of independence and you're putting out there your heroes going around sticking a mic and saying have we progressed yeah. and people yeah. are saying no exactly you know and mm. and 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 then to not judge uh, the you know you're, you're making we are making us understand why she's doing the things she's doing mm -hmm. why she is uh, she says a revolutionary everybody else says a terrorist exactly, uh, yeah. and but that's exactly what it is you know it's 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 it just depends on which line hmm. you know which side you're on yeah. uh, and and then to sort of imagine this as a romance <laughs> that's that's for me the clincher like i do not i can't imagine it and i think that's the i wouldn't go as far to say genius but yeah sure that's the genius of the film now and i know it's not aged well for the social media generation in a lot of them watch it later and i saw over the last couple of years a lot of discourse going on on twitter and all where they found it deeply problematic because that's that's an easy word to use now but the nuances if you go into and you understand that sure it's a love story one thing and secondly i don't think sharukh's character was ever supposed to be liked in that film he they used i think what maniratnam did so well was he used the romantic hero that we he had already become by then he had become a superstar in that genre and he combined it with the shades of those dar and anjam characters and gave rise to this reporter who represents the center and you know who's basically being so pushy and stocky um he was a i was cringing while watching it but not because the filmmaking was bad because his character was um something if we saw in a love story like the sort of kabir singh discourse that came a couple of years ago uh, we would straight away dismiss as you know this this guy is so toxic and he's so problematic but the whole point of the film was that because he represented one the mainstream india she represented the peripheral india and i think him being stocky and all was a very good reflection of how it's always been not just 50 years 75 years also so yeah yeah, yeah so. and you know it's interesting because the character what the character does is is now when you look at it it is creepy yeah very right? creepy <laughs> it's yeah, very yeah, creepy yeah. and and but because it's sharuk he makes it less creepy much much less and creepy. that itself becomes a game with the audience right you because it's sharuk you want to see it as oh wow he's so look at his eyes in that scene and, i know his and eyes and, oh my god and i'm like wait we aren't actually i think maniratnam wants us to do this because he's actually not a good not a good person here <laughs> he's not doing good things but yeah i think where where perhaps it it is the clunkiness see the the maybe maybe it was an impossible concept to begin with this this merging of the romantic with the political yeah. uh, with the critique of the way you know the center has dealt with with mm. parts of india uh, and for me what happened was really in that second half of it when you also then being make it like a dd lj esque kind of shaadi ka ghar mm. Yeah. You know you're trying so many things and some of it and you know then it does become kind of like almost borderline silly where it's like oh he would just give the two girls his barsati uh, to yeah. live in mm -hmm. and of course they are both planning to be part of this bombing right. and all the rest of it but even there the character of Preeti isn't as so fun hmm. and oh, so yeah. fresh I know yeah uh, while watching it first of all I'd forgotten she was in the film <laughs> Uh, so, but she's so lovely. Yeah, well, she is. She's she's a breath of fresh air, which is what her character is supposed to be in yeah. the film also. And we've seen love triangles in the nineties with Shahrukh Khan, right? He inevitably will disappoint one woman, but here it acquired new shape and context. Yeah. Why is he disappointing one woman? Why is he even trying to run away from himself? And you know that whole barsa. Of course, the the execution was a big problem in the second half. Uh, whenever the songs came, I felt like the film looks. so beautiful and so aesthetically pleasing and the way the reason the frames are even shared on social media after all these years i feel like that's a great ruse for what the film is trying to say because that's how we um as an india also tend to look at 
uh, that particular part of India. We we look at it as unadorned and beautiful and something we take a holiday for uh, in and we go there and this is our view of it basically and that's why Manisha Koirala without makeup was a rare thing and she was the only one who used to do this in films and yeah. I noticed this in the 90s. My father pointed it out and I was like, mm, that's that's okay, that's normal. She's she's so beautiful and uh, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing and that's she represented the our gaze of the northeast back then and back now probably and i feel like maniratnam had so many beautiful ideas on paper with this film whether he hit home or not I, i'd say it's 50 50 but um, uh, for me all these little analogies even when she says that she wants like eight children that's the eight states and and these these little uh, things that he put throughout it wasn't without the madness wasn't without any method right? no no yeah. for sure not i mean he begins the the movie begins with i think that is the best one. first shot i've seen in a oh while. my god i wasn't i saw it five times while rewatching it i was like this is not possible santosh what has he done yeah yeah and yeah. then that sequence on that train station oh yeah, yeah of course that i mean is... so sort of just gorgeous exactly, and so yeah. so romantic uh, you know in mm. in what in what it did and how he sees her and and she is so beautiful yeah she is she's so stunning, beautiful yeah. and then to cut to chaya che by the way i have to tell you that back in the day uh, the film was a flop right it didn't work yeah. commercially in india it it did yeah. well abroad but not not in the country and there were all these stories about how i remember especially from gujarat hmm. that the exhibitors just took it on themselves kyunki again reels the to cut chaya chaya <laughs> And put it again post interval oh, wow. so that people would stay. Yeah. Because people were literally just coming in to watch Chaya Chaya and leaving. Mm, right. I mean, <laughs> you know? I, yeah, I, I can totally imagine that. And that the, the soundtrack was the thing. And it was the. And of course, I wasn't there then, so I don't know how well it did and all. But I can totally imagine people wondering what the hell is going on. And uh, nobody got it. Yeah, nobody got it. And even now, if you see it, of course, we have hindsight to help us a little. We've grown up in a certain kind of India. So I guess now, of course, it's it's easy to sound smart about it. But the whole point of a film aging is that uh, how it sort of makes sense over time to us as people as well. And I, I think with this film, I found the characterizations very, very fascinating even today. Like back then, I didn't understand it. I won't pretend like I was like, oh, I just thought Shah Rukh is going to play the romantic hero again. And I was like, what? Why? But romantic hero, but he's still seeming really off in this. And uh, now I get it. And I, and I find it very fascinating that even though he represents, you know, the center in a way, he's also a reporter. He's an RJ who's asking he's questions asking of the government. Yeah, yeah, he's asking tough questions. He's going to the extremist camp. He's, he's interviewing the leader. They like him. So he's basically uh, sort of almost a rebel within his own ideology. He's doing what a journalist should be doing. And she is already reluctant from the beginning and a little limo, I mean, they'll say the title itself says it that both of them are very similar in their own camps. If you think about it, they are middling, they're already reluctant to do what they're doing. And when they find each other, I found it very ironic that when they find each other, they, they have to sound like they have conviction in what they're doing. Right. Like Shah Rukh is, uh, Shah Rukh's character is like, um, you know, you can't do this when he finds out and uh, th this is a country and this is, he sounds exactly like the people she thinks he's representing and she sounds exactly like uh, and their, their defense mechanism is to sound like they have conviction and the beauty is that they don't. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And you know what was fascinating is how much the songs are set pieces. Yeah. They're their own little stories. True. Yeah. Which again in such a complex narrative he also put in songs. That are like completely, you could just take them out and hmm. just watch them on a loop, which is what we all do. Which is I mean, what we do. yeah, I mean, Satrangi Re and then uh, Jia Jale, I mean, just exquisite songs. Absolutely. And I the mean, choreography and just the visual, hmm. you know, treatment of it all. It was perfection if you look at the songs in isolation, the lyrics, the cinematography, the choreography, and you never believe it belonged to this film. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. And as I said, like, I, I feel like that's a great smokescreen for what it's trying to say and they, it wants us to be like really distracted by what's happening in the songs and the cinematography and Chantosh Sivan the way he's framing the scenes and Shah Rukh's eyes and Manisha's face and uh, but what's happening is really ugly within and uh, and and sure the love story is a little contrived in uh, in parts and you know uh, Shah Rukh, but I find it very 
uh, I find it very brave that you know someone like Shah Rukh did that film absolutely uh, after having a slew of hits where he had become this king of romance and then using that same image to fool us into sort of doing this and he spends most of the last half an hour just running and getting beaten up and crying which is what he does a lot in a lot of films but here it felt unnerving and here it felt like okay this is the Shah Rukh we know and he's trying to tell us something we don't know through it yeah yeah so. and you know what the treat was this time watching it rahul was also seeing how many incredible actors were there back then i mean this film has shiva chadda yeah. sanjay mishra piyush mishra aditya shrivastava and they exactly. just shiva is there for like ek second in a flash yeah. and <laughs> you know? and how long have they been how long? There? and i'm so happy that yeah. We know them now, Ar- and Gajad Rao is also. Gajad Rao, exactly, and I'm like, exactly. Wow, it's been 25 years, and they were yeah. doing these bit roles. Even there, they stood out, like in their little roles, and uh, they're finally at it. And of course, that's that's the reason uh, I'm very ha- thankful for the OTT sort of streaming landscape. Because if not for that, we wouldn't know their faces yeah. even today. And they all mattered. Like if you notice, some of them even like um, like I I think of couple of them like Preeti Zinta. and as well and meeta vashisht i think meeta vashisht is there yeah and uh, zora segal of course exactly. yeah and and both of them uh, preeti and meeta went by their own names in the film as well and i felt like mani ratnam is really going wild with the allegories here and it's just <laughs> it felt really uh, nice that there was so much thought put into um, something so complicated yeah. back in 98 and the beauty is that it still holds true more than ever now and we see films struggle to deal with it we exactly. see films struggling exactly yeah. and and you when i looked up what were the hits of that year now hmm. it was kuch kuch hota hai yes. and soldier if exactly and that's what we were making then and those that's where audiences were going to watch and i can imagine this as a shock to the system and you know just those little moments where sharuk is like you know i, I hope our baby doesn't look like you and that little that racism there within how we look at the, you know that part and how she was like you know this is how it is and and their little playful banter which is actually very toxic if you think about it i i think it's it's really difficult to do and only someone who made bombay and roja uh, could have the guts to do something like that in the mainstream space no he's he's a truly a man with courage Yeah, and massive vision. Like yeah. I wish I was um, sensible enough in the '90s to appreciate all three films for what they were. Because right now I can just say that oh shit, I was so disturbed, and you know. Um, but uh, I'm I'm very glad I watched those films when I did because it, it gave me it gave me an understanding that of course the '90s was a was when a certain genre of heroes and heroines and and films took off, but. there were filmmakers like ram gopal verma and mani ratnam doing something so uh, different and saying such harsh and difficult truths yeah. in their own way and using music so beautifully so to beautiful. rahman yeah. and uh, to 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 give such uh, complicated messages so so yeah i i was while revisiting it i felt like i hadn't watched it before <laughs> me neither yeah. i mean i have no excuse i was sensible enough i was an adult <laughs> watching it but again you know 25 years much. is a long time it I was mean. just such a shock to the system yeah. rahul we had never seen anything and i loved roja i loved yeah. bombay those were just movies that really spoke hmm. to me but hmm. but this one i was just like ye kya ho gaya you know and 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 now i look at it and i'm like my god what a man of courage which explains why he's here 40 years you know into his career yeah no absolutely like i'm very glad we're talking about him now because he's been across languages across mediums across whatever it is and and he's always been there and uh, for, it just for me like i feel like when i look at dilse now i'm just um yeah i'm i'm just wondering if those are the sort of stories we are able to we're going to be able to tell over the next few decades because it's I very difficult so. yeah i know I it's it's so. It's really I don't think you could make it today. Yeah, I don't think so because there's so many things are like oh no, and then I'm like oh no wait you're in 2023 you're a little paranoid right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it was it was so wonderful to see it again and and uh, please tell us what you would like us to pick for the next FC retake. We are reading, we are listening, uh, and this was fun. Thank you, Rahul. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure.